Hey guys, so today we're talking about sciatica and some of the reasons um, sciatica can happen. So there's a few different causes here. You can have disc herniation, um, you can have arthritis in the spine, and then one of the one of the ones that we're going to talk about today is piriformis syndrome. So I'm sure you are familiar with or know what sciatica is, maybe even dealt with it personally um, in the past. So sciatic, sciatica uh, comes from the sciatic nerve. Sciatic nerve comes out of these lower lumbar spine and out of the nerves that come out of the lower lumbar spine with some of these sacral nerve roots and they come down and they form the sciatic nerve that goes all the way down the back of the leg and into the calf and then into the foot. So um, when there's irritation of that sciatic nerve, it can create sciatica. So uh, it's more of a symptom rather than an actual diagnosis. So a lot of people can have sciatica, but we got to figure out why the sciatica, what's causing that sciatica. Okay, so um, with piriformis syndrome, what the piriformis muscle is, uh, it runs from the, the side of the sacrum here, and it comes out across and it attaches onto the outside of the hip. So it, it kind of runs from here to here. And as that sciatic nerve passes underneath, if there is compression um, or tightness through that muscle, it can create some of the, the sciatic nerve symptoms. And most often that sciatic nerve runs underneath the piriformis muscle. Now in about 10% of the population or so, that nerve actually kind of pierces right through uh, the piriformis. So it kind of runs right through it, which becomes more vulnerable to compression and irritation of that nerve. Now the piriformis muscle um, is, has primary function in rotating that hip outwards. So external rotation of that hip, and it also helps to stabilize that hip. Um, and piriformis syndrome can occur from um, a trauma, things like a fall, uh, catching yourself from falling. But typically, it happens from repeated micro traumas. So um, long distance walking, uh, biking, kind of puts a, a repeated compression uh, and tightness through that muscle which can kind of irritate and compress down on that nerve. So when somebody comes in and says they have sciatica, well, we have to, we have to determine what is causing that sciatica to happen, right? So it's not as simple as saying, well, I don't have any low back pain, but I have pins and needles burning down the back of my leg, so I must have piriformis syndrome. Or saying, I have low back pain and I have sciatica, so it must be you know a disc herniation or something in the spine compressing down and causing those sciatic symptoms. Because um, you can have uh, piriformis syndrome, but also have low back pain, or you can have something like a disc herniation, um, but not have any low back pain at all and still have some of those, those symptoms, maybe in just the calf or the lower leg. A couple of things that you can do to kind of differentiate between the two is number one, um, stand up and bend over and touch your toes 10 times. Bend all the way down, come back up. Now, if that changes the symptoms that you feel in your leg, it's most likely not piriformis syndrome. It's most likely stemming from the low back, maybe a herniation, um, maybe some sort of arthritis going on that's causing those symptoms to occur. Another one you can do here is while sitting down, if you just, whatever side you're feeling those symptoms on, you're going to sit up nice and tall and you're going to kick that leg up. So you're going to straighten that leg and you're going to start to slouch down there. Now, if that makes it worse, again, it's probably not piriformis syndrome. It's most likely uh, something occurring in the low back. Okay, so just a, a little example of this could be you don't have low back pain, but you have 
kind of this tightness or it feels like a strain in the calf or the lower hamstring and um, you, you feel like it's just, you know, like a, a tight or strained muscle. But going through those couple movements there, standing up, bending down, touching your toes 10 times, it changes the calf or the lower hamstring pain. It probably would make it worse, but it could make it better. But either way, if there's a change in symptoms there, it's more than likely an issue stemming with the low back. And we gotta, we gotta look at that further. Now, on the other hand, um, you can have true piriformis syndrome. I would say this is more rare, but you can have true piriformis syndrome and also have low back pain. So you think it's a disc herniation, maybe you get an MRI and all that's negative. There's no issue there. So the pain that you're feeling in the low back could be a referral pain from that sciatic nerve into the low back, or it could be an entirely separate issue itself. But um, with true piriformis syndrome, we got to focus on stretching out or kind of lengthening out that uh, the piriformis muscle to relieve that compression. Nerves don't like compression and they don't like stretch. So we got to kind of relieve that, lessen the compression on that nerve, and then we need to look at other things such as hip stability. That piriformis may be working super hard because the the other muscles of the hip that are meant to stabilize aren't doing their job or they're not working as well as they could be. So just a couple of things to think about there. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know and we will be back with something new shortly. <laughs>